and today we are going to take a look at the Synology DS923 Plus NAS. The upgrades that we can do, software that it uses, apps that can be installed and more. And if you are using your Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer and you still haven't activated, don't forget to check out the Keys Fan where we can find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that we can see on screen and down below in the video description we will get an extra discount. In the packaging we will find two boxes with accessories, the power cords and the power adapter, two ethernet cables, security keys, some screws and of course the DS923+. Plus. It's made of plastic but sturdy construction. It has the Synology logo on both sides. At the rear we will find two fans for cooling the units and the discs, two 1 gigabit ethernet ports with link aggregation, eSATA connection, power input, USB 3.2 and a PCI expansion port for installing a network card up to 10 gigabit. Below we will find two ports for NVMe disks and at the front the status LEDs, USB 3.2, power button and four 3.5 or 2.5 bays. To place the SSD disks just remove the bottom covers, place the SSD and secure it with the plastic tabs without using screws. I did use two two Sabrent discs of 2 terabytes each. Placing the 3.5 discs is also quite easy. Just remove the base, remove the two side plastic tabs, place in the discs. In this case we are using the Toshiba N300 of 4 terabytes each, which are discs suitable for Nash. Then place the tabs that hold the discs without the need for screws once again and then put the bay back in the NAS. We can also upgrade the RAM. The unit comes with 4 gigs but we can put up to 32 gigs and for that we just need to remove the base and we will find the two slots for DDR4 RAM on the side. Just remove the original one and in this particular case we put two 16 gigs of RAM DDR4 Sabrent and at this point we can turn on the unit and start and we can go directly to the IP or use the software Synology Assistant to find the NAS. Then we just need to follow the guide that will indicate the necessary steps such as downloading the most current version of the operating system, creating a username and password, some optional choices and we are at the initial dashboard. And first of all we will need to create a storage volume where we can choose several formats with or without redundancy. In this particular case I did choose RAID 5 which is what seems to me the most suitable for the number of disks that we have. Just choose the disks and that is it. Then the system will do all the synchronization but we can start using the unit normally right away. We can also optionally use the SSD for cache. That is to make reading and writing faster and to activate it just in the storage management area choose the option to activate SSD cache and follow the indications and in a matter of a few moments we will have the system fully optimized. And one of the aspects that always makes me curious on any unit on any brand is the app installation area. Here is called the package center and it has a lot of applications to choose from including multimedia servers like Plex, MB and so on and to install we just need to choose the app that we want and then press to install with the click of a button. Then we can access it from the app itself or in the application area where we can easily start using any of them. For example, MB, MariaDB, Download Station in which it allows us to download directly to the NAS without the need to use any computer. Now let's take a look at the dashboard and how easy it is to use. Now on the top right corner we have four options right over here, notifications, personal options where we can select for example the language that we are using among other simple but necessary changes which are great to see right over here. We also have a quick glimpse that will show us if everything is okay or not and the resource monitor that shows us the CPU and RAM utilization and also the network. Now on the CPU we are using 12% because we are still synchronizing the RAID 5 that we have chosen. So basically these are the options and of course to search. 
On the desktop, we will find these four shortcuts, but we have other options here that I want to share with you. Now, we have seen the package center where we'll find all the apps and some of them we have installed already and we have seen how. So very easy, very simple to use. And one of the things that I'm enjoying on the Synology desktop is that I can, for example, clean up even more so I can remove this if I don't want and if I want to personalize and customize the way that I prefer I can just right click and then add to desktop and if I go to the desktop right now I've got MB server right over here and I can do this with any of the apps doesn't matter if they are pre-installed or the ones that I want to install and at any moment I can remove the shortcuts and keep my desktop cleaned which is something that most systems do not allow so these are I would say one desktop and a virtual desktop or apps drawer if we want and this is a great way to keep things organized also a really nice thing is that we if we open several apps and we minimize as we can see they are staying right over here on the left top corner so this will allow me to have another shortcut and if i click i can open this if i click again it will close and if i choose this one and this one or i can select more than one and we can navigate and work on both and do what we need to do this is a very intuitive and simple way to use the Synology desktop. Now, one of the things that we will take a look is if we go to network, for example, and info center, we can see the uh, specifications that we have right over here. We are working with the AMD Ryzen R1600, uh, which is a dual core CPU with 2.6 gigahertz, turbo boosts up to 3.1. At this moment, with 32 gigs of RAM, which we did the upgrades and we have a lot of info right over here now we will not cover everything on the dashboard because we would uh, need to do a really long video but we have all the options that we need now in terms of the folders we can create for any shared folder and then with the options that a certain user can use it and a certain user cannot use it and we can select the name that we want here we will decide which users we want to have right over here so at this moment we have these two that come by default but i did create this one here so i can create a new user and give permission to a few things and remove those permissions for a few other things for example this allows the user to change account passwords or send notification mail to the newly created user generate random password this is really nice if we don't want to see actually i'm not really sure if we yeah we will see the password but okay so we can generate the password and one of the things that we will uh, allow the user to change the password so that the admin does not have access to the password which i do believe that it's the correct thing to do so that's a great option right over here that i didn't test out but we can see that it's available so there are endless options that we can find um, hardware and power we can also schedule the way that the nash works what time does it turn on on what time does it turn off if we want to do that energy saving settings so it will um, have a really low impact in terms of power consumption and so on and so forth update and restore but at this moment it's running the latest dsm version and basically that is it and as i said we will not spend the whole day right over here just want to show you that there are a lot of options really useful this is one of them the resource monitor will show us everything if i go to task manager it will show me what's spending the most cpu usage what's not at this moment is the own operating system so let's close this those that are more important to begin as i would say that it's the storage manager to create the volume the initial volume as we said and then the file station that will allow us to create and let's create by the way a folder and let's create a shared folder that will appear on our network so i would say that this could be our media folder so that we can put movies and series and share across the network do we want to protect this shared folder 
folder by encrypting it. Now, do you want to protect the shared folder with right ones? Also, no. So let's leave it like this. Enable data uh, checksum for advanced data integrity. Not for this one. Enable shared folder quota. Uh, this will depend. If you want to give a user a folder for him to use, you can select, okay, you will be able to use 25 gigabytes and that is it that will be your quota so you will have to make a good management of space and this will be great if you have a lot of users uh, using this device next 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 it's really easy just as this guest do we want to give access to uh, someone that it's not uh, logged into the units in this particular case i will say yes let's say that we are on an internal network we will give access to our multimedia streaming devices and that is it we have now the media volume where we can store all our content so that other computers can access it so right now i've got my finder on one of my macs and we have the public folder where we already made a download using the download manager but we also have the new media files so i can use my um, mac in this particular instance to put any document right over here and use it and share with the network now in this particular case this would be the media content so movies and series this basically sums up in terms of this quick glimpse at the desktop and how the way that we can use it and personally to show all the options that we have right over here which as i said at the beginning there are a lot so my suggestion would be that if you have a particular question leave them down below on the comment section and I will do as best and as fast as I can to answer it out. And if it's a demanding topic, then we will return with a video on that particular topic. I hope that you enjoyed getting to know the Synology DS923 Plus a little better. And if you did, don't forget that usual thumbs up, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. And perhaps subscribe to the channel for more news. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.